A big coast-to-coast system is taking shape as we speak. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kagus in this video. We're going to track it from west coast to east coast. It's said to bring heavy rain, the potential for severe weather, even some snow to parts of the country. Also, the coldest air in the east blasts in behind this system. Then we're going to take a trip to the Gulf of Mexico. A blob of thunderstorms is developing. There's an outside shot for tropical development, but more than likely, it's going to bring some heavy rain to the Gulf Coast, including Florida. If you're interested in the eclipse, Stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to have the path of totality overlaid with the cloud cover. So if you live or visiting the path of totality, you will know if you'll be able to catch a glimpse of this super rare event. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on the weather, all things cool like eclipses, you have to hit subscribe. If you happen to find this video helpful, Hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so taking you to the Pacific Northwest first. That's where we're going to start our journey from this coast-to-coast -coast storm. You see it there, big area of low pressure kind of blasting the Pacific Northwest, bringing some heavy rain, maybe a little bit of mountain snow to the Cascades. Then this pushes from west to east. So by Friday already, we have a new area of low pressure developing from that upper low, kind of ejecting out of the Rockies. And where we could have some severe weather on Thursday is going to be right in this zone as the system itself kind of plows right on through the northern plains. We're stopping this at 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, and you see some very, very heavy rain extending back through parts of the Dakotas into Minnesota, into southern Minnesota, into northern Iowa. There's the cold front portion of it, so some colder air getting ready to blast into Oklahoma City by Friday morning. We'll take a look at the temperatures in just one second. And then it advances further to the east. So there's Saturday at 10 o'clock. The same system that worked its way on the west coast is now towards the Ohio River Valley, pushing through places like Pittsburgh into Cleveland, Erie, Buffalo, with some pretty heavy rains and gusty winds as well. And then this eventually pushes off the east coast of the United States after impacting places like New York City, Boston, Maine, Saturday night into early Sunday morning before it works its way out towards the Canadian Maritimes. We'll first look at the severe weather side of this, and then we're going to take a look at the temperatures, also some snow amounts with this system moving through. Storm Prediction Center highlighting areas from Ord, Nebraska into Omaha, St. Joseph, Missouri, Topeka, Kansas, through Wichita, Kansas, right along the Kansas-Oklahoma border for the potential for a severe weather. Now, this is going to be on Thursday as that system is in its developing phase and kind of sweeping across the plains, that cold front could spark a few stronger thunderstorms here. So we're going to be watching that closely as that system moves from west to east. As it's doing so, it's going to be drawing in all that colder air, cold enough for some snow, mainly in the higher elevations. But we'll not be surprised if we do pick up some lower elevation snow here as well. Casper could get two inches of snow. The darker purples where you see it here, most of this is higher elevation stuff uh, through the Rockies. But nonetheless, a nice dump of snow coming through as that system works its way from west to east. I mentioned this at the top of the video, that this is going to bring the coldest air of the season to the east, especially the southeast. Look at this. Here's the outlook of temperatures over the next 6 to 10 days. And you see the darker areas down in the deep south, including Florida. Those are the higher probabilities of it being colder than normal over the next 6 to 10 days. So this is really as we get into the weekend and beyond. As that colder air leaves the Rockies, I showed you the snow coming in there. We are going to then warm things up big time heading into the weekend. Places like Seattle, Denver, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and then the desert southwest. Here's the deal. Here's how this kind of takes shape. So we're going to start this on Thursday here, a couple days away. And note the temperature divide by 4 o'clock Thursday afternoon Eastern time. You see still some big warmth surging through Texas and the plains. But look at the divide in temperatures here. Find the cold front. There it is, 75 in Garden City. Compare that to the mid to upper 40s in Denver, Colorado. That front then going to push its way east. Let me get my eraser and take it off here. Look at the temperature difference between Oklahoma City and Garden City now as that front continues to push south and east. This front means business. 5 o'clock on Friday, there you go, pushing the lower 90s in San Antonio, not almost 90s in Houston as well. By 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern, there is the colder weather. Casper, 37 degrees. Again, this is one of the biggest temperature divides of the season as well. Memphis, we're in the mid-60s on Saturday afternoon. Pensacola is still in the 80s. Watch what happens by Sunday. 62 in Atlanta, 75 in Orlando. You can see the ridge starting to build here, the dip in the jet stream. 
coming further south and east, and then also comfortable on Monday. Most of central and north Florida in the low 70s. Some of us may even be staying in the 60s as far south as Florida for highs on Monday. So again, coldest air of the season, coolest air of the season, blast east. All right, on to the tropics and on to this blob that has been developing for the last couple of days. We've been talking about this. It's in the southwest Gulf of Mexico now. We have a lot going on. It's very disorganized, but there is Invest 93L, so the Hurricane Center can run its models on it. I still don't think this is going to develop tropically, and here is one of the reasons why. You see Lydia, it's a hurricane in the Pacific right there. It's going to make landfall in West Mexico on the Pacific side. Here's what's left of Max, a remnant low. It is injecting some extra moisture, though, towards the Bay of Campeche, Southwest Gulf of Mexico region. But note how the clouds are kind of leaving Lydia and then being drawn across the northern Gulf of Mexico right on through Florida. That is the subtropical jet stream blowing all the wind over, and it is transporting all of that Pacific moisture over Mexico into the north Gulf of Mexico. As this blob, Invest 93L, lifts north and kind of merges with the frontal system, the same cold front that brought that cooler weather uh, to the deep south over the last couple of days, it's going to get sheared apart. So it's going to kind of merge with this frontal system up near the north Gulf Coast. It's going to make it hard to develop tropically still. It's going to bring some pretty decent heavy rain. I do want to show you the computer models on this, though, because it is an invest, an area of investigation. So the Hurricane Center runs its specialized models on it. And you see it pretty good consensus of taking the center anyway toward the North Gulf Coast, closer to the panhandle of Florida. So it will bring some rain. Some of that going to be really, really heavy. It's going to be beneficial for our friends in Louisiana, into Alabama, into Mississippi. We don't need it so much in parts of Florida where we just got blasted with heavy rain last week. But nonetheless, you see where the heaviest rain looks to focus over the next couple of days. This is from Wednesday through Friday uh, through 11 o'clock and right through that corridor from about New Orleans maybe as far back as southeast Lake Charles, uh, southeast of Lake Charles, and into South Carolina, and then a lot of the Florida Peninsula. That's where the heaviest rain is going to focus. Also, my large box is blocking Brownsville, Texas. What's going on? Shout out in Brownsville. We're also going to get some heavy rain as that Pacific moisture from what is now Lydia comes over, taking a ride across that conveyor belt known as the subtropical jet stream. So anyway, some heavy rain coming there. Corpus Christi, I think we miss out on the heaviest stuff in terms of the rainfall as the Pacific moisture kind of surges on over. On to your main tropical update now, and things are getting a little interesting in the tropics, um, both right now and a little long range out into the month. We alluded to the long range part in uh, last week and the week before in our previous videos. I'll show you uh, some ensembles deep into the month of October, but first and foremost, the little yellow area here, this is from the Hurricane Center highlighting Invest 93L, our blob, unorganized blob in the Gulf, with a 20% shot of tropical development. They also don't believe, with high probability anyway, that this is going to become anything tropical. And again, we can clearly see here, there's the what's left over of that front through central Florida. It's going to merge with that frontal system and then get sheared apart again by the high wind shear from the subtropical jet stream. Out here, this is where it gets a little interesting in the short term. This is Invest 92L. This is likely to become our next tropical depression of the 2023 hurricane season. But it's doing some weird things already. This is going to be highly uncertain. The models start to diverge, and they're also doing something a little bit different, really a lot different than what I showed you yesterday. We showed you that the GFS, if you were watching yesterday's video, it was in the western camp here. The TV con was kind of like in the middle. That's the big consensus model that the Hurricane Center uses a lot. It comes up here and then button hooks over in the GFS realm. The ensembles of the GFS were out here. Now they're kind of backing further west. And then now the Canadian's the only one that's kind of bending this out. So we're going to watch this one closely. There's no center. You know what I always tell you guys if you've been watching the channel. And thank you guys for tuning in and subscribing. And all new subscribers uh, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. I want to show you some of the ensembles. If you, that's what I, was, what I was saying before I got off on that tangent, into the, the squirrel tangent. Ensembles are the best way to go at this stage in the game with a system that's developing doesn't have a center yet because there's different conditions po put into the model before we really know much about it. We don't have good data out there in the open ocean, of course. So it's kind of tweak the model is with 
different initial data so we can kind of get a range of outcomes rather than kind of like a point forecast with some of those operational models what I just showed you. These are the European ensembles, and you see it here through the next 10 days. Some of them take it up and out. Others, though, keep it going west, albeit it does look weak, 1011, 1008, 995. Those are the millibars there. Um, lower the number there, the stronger the storm, and there's nothing too terribly strong. Again, once you're getting into the 970 realm, that's when we're talking about a hurricane. So we're nowhere near that, just to be clear. But it is ha it does have the potential to come west towards the Caribbean island. So it's something that we are going to watch and be mindful of. That is super atypical of this year. Once we get into October, we really start to shut down developing systems out here. And focus to the Caribbean, which brings me to my next point. Look at this. There's only a few ensembles on board. Look at these L's here. First and foremost, we talked about this last week and the week before, that the Madden-Julian Oscillation, a convective complex circumnavigates the globe and can enhance tropical activity. We talked about that likely having a spike and increase in the Pacific. We got Max and Lydia. Now it's going to be moving towards the Caribbean in Western Gulf. Well, we have that blob developing in the short term. That's a result of that. And now look at this. Some ensembles, this is going to be through October 20th, have a few L's off of Central America. That's exactly where we would look climatologically speaking. So that's a check mark. And that's exactly where we would look weather forcing from that Madden Julian oscillation look too. So we have climatology coming into play. We have meteorological factors coming into play. And now we have model guidance at least a little bit biting on the fact that we could have some development in the Western Caribbean closer to Central America uh, as we round that third week of October, which is what we had said at the beginning of October, just about a week or two ago, that that's what we need to be watching. So that's what we'll watch in the short term and long term in the tropics. So just keep that in mind. All right. I promise this at the beginning of the video. The video and if you're still with me, hit that thumbs up button. The Eclipse. The annular solar eclipse, the rare event that is going to take the country by storm on October 14th. You need those special glasses. Make sure you have those. Do not look at this eclipse without them or some kind of other viewing device. If you want to make your own, I'll post a link on how to do so. It has a timeline in that as well. I'm going to show you the timeline right here. Now that we're close enough, I'm going to overlay it with the model forecast for the cloud cover. The white and gray on your screen, not this gray here. Let me get my telestrator out. This gray here is the moon's shadow being cast on the earth. Anywhere inside these yellow lines, that is totality. That is the main event of this annular solar eclipse. All this stuff here, that's cloud cover. My friends in Oregon, I'm so sorry. As we've been waiting for this for so long, I think most of us in Oregon are going to be locked in the clouds. So this is 9.15 Pacific time as the eclipse gets underway for places like Florence and in to the coastal area of Oregon. We're locked in the clouds. 9.17 Medford, we're mostly cloudy, if not overcast because of a storm system sliding through. Most of Oregon, again, staying in the gray. A little bit better in Nevada, although northwest Nevada looks pretty cloudy at times. Here is where the clouds are again. All this white you see on your screen. Elko, Nevada, we're right on the cusp. I think we're going to be in and out of some clouds. So I don't think completely blocked out, but still we're going to have more clouds than I would like. Utah may be the best place weather-wise to see this. Capitol Reef National Park, one of my favorite places on this planet. We're going to see it. It looks good weather-wise. We are in totality, of course, and the weather looks to cooperate. This is 1029 Mountain Time as it crosses over southern and central Utah. Four Corners area. We're looking pretty good as well. Colorado, check. Utah, check. Arizona, New Mexico. Looking very, very nice right now. The cloud cover almost non-existent. We do have a few clouds coming through central New Mexico by the time totality gets to us. This is 1033 in the morning now on October 14th. We're going to put this into motion. Santa Fe, Albuquerque. Ugh. We've got some clouds around. I don't think we're as bad as Oregon, but there will be clouds to fight. I'm not saying you're not going to see this one. This is also a few days in advance. We're recording this on October 10th for October 14th, so there's going to be some wiggle room here, especially for places like Santa Fe and Albuquerque, where it's not completely locked in like the Pacific Northwest. South, uh, Southeast Mexico, or New Mexico, we're doing pretty good as well. Um, 
Carlsbad. I think we're looking really nice. Uh, closer to the Texas border, we are looking good. Elkins, again, looking pretty good. There will be a few clouds around. Again, not as bad as what we'll see in the Pacific Northwest. Midland, Odessa, two thumbs up. Loving this for you. Loving this for our friends in San Angelo. And for our friends in San Antonio, it's looking pretty good. This is 11.53 in the morning, Central Time. We have totality. There are a few clouds. You can kind of see them through. Uh, the moon's shadow, that circle on your screen. There are a few clouds around, but I'm cautiously optimistic. The thickest stuff staying in Mexico. We're looking pretty good towards uh, the Gulf Coast. Corpus Christi, a few clouds around, but we should be okay for totality. And Beeville, and Runge, looking very nice as the moon's shadow exits and ends the eclipse just after noon central time. On October 14th. So there you go. Some places Mother Nature are going to cooperate. Other places like Oregon, Northern California, Northwest Nevada. We're going to be locked in the clouds for the most part. Again, things can still change. It's a forecast. But again, if you're in Oregon and you want to see this eclipse, I would suggest taking a drive a couple hours southwest in totality because I really think uh, we are locked in the clouds in Oregon. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, and I really hope you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to stay updated on the weather and other cool stuff that happens in the sky, like the 2023 annular solar eclipse, hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you on board. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from, and we will catch you next time.